Here comes a new challenger! Hello everyone and welcome to Not Everyone Is Here and we'll be covering a few Bandai Namco franchises for a few episodes as I have already started with Soul Calibur so now we're going to continue on with Dark Souls because for a company that is already working on the game it is kind of strange that there's barely any representation for its IPs outside of Pac-Man's Uptaunt and that's not even referencing a couple other franchises that are owned by Bandai Namco and so I'll be covering a few in a couple of videos going forward. And so, starting off, we're going to be talking about Dark Souls. Now, Dark Souls is a very popular game series, best known for being, you know, difficult, but through trials and tribulations, trial and error, you will continue to play the game until you succeed. That is kind of the way the game is designed to make you want to keep coming back, to keep trying and trying again, you know, to learn the patterns of these bosses and enemies you'll be facing, etc., etc., right? like it's it's interesting because you know even though i never played the dark souls games i know a lot of people that have including my own dad which played bloodborne which is like similar in style right where you know same thing you go you keep trying and you keep doing it over and over until you succeed which is interesting you know because people keep coming back to it I, you know for me i i think that if i'm getting angry all right that's it game's over ba boom time to delete you know Hey, but that's just my mindset on things. You know, I'm not other players, I guess you could say. But Dark Souls is very popular and one of Bandai Namco's best in terms of all their franchises owned currently. Though, as far as I know, public opinion is that Dark Souls 2 sucks. So I don't know how the third game did so well after the sequel sucks, but hey, you know, maybe that's just the appeal. Maybe if something's a bit too difficult, if it's slightly less difficult, the more difficult game will be remembered as badly, I guess. <laughs> funny enough, I did watch one of my friends struggle to play that game, and oh boy, he was funny to laugh at, I'll tell you that much. But still, when it comes to Dark Souls, it's very popular and very well known, and a lot of games have taken inspiration from it, along with games that are basically just it. As a matter of fact, I think the most recent Dark Souls-ish game was the well precursor to Dark Souls, which was Demon Souls, which got a remake on the PS5, I believe. I don't know if it already came out, or if it is out, but regardless, it was what came before Dark Souls. Bloodborne is one I already mentioned, there's Sekiro Shadowed Sides twice, etc, right? So, and there are obviously other games that have taken inspiration that I just won't remember off the top of my head. But still, it's an amazing worthwhile franchise. And, well, not just franchise, but design, you know? It's just one of those things where it's like, oh, you think it's difficult, or it is difficult, but then you get better at it and you improve in the game, you know? Which is something I've always liked about games, in particular fighting games. To me, a fighting game is a, a genre in which you will improve slowly but surely, even when you keep on losing, you will keep improving. And I always like that about games like that. The only thing is that Dark Souls, well, it has multiplayer, but that's not the main, you know, core basis of the actual game, whereas fighting games, it's you versus someone else. And speaking of gaming, that isn't, well, it's, remember guys, Smash isn't a fighting a game, okay, it's a competitive, competitive action game. game. So thanks to our competitive action game, let's talk about Smash, and has Dark Souls had any history with Smash, you know, particularly with leaks or theories or anything, and actually it has. It was actually one of the first leaks that came out back during the Fighter Pass 1 era. It wasn't a leak per se, more so a theory, a Google search theory that essentially led people to believing that, oh hey, you know, it seems like we're getting Ryu Hayabusa, Banjo, Kazooie, uh, Doom Slayer, and another character known as Ataras? Ataras? Ataras. I can't pronounce the name. A R T O R I A S. Maybe it's just because I'm recording this in three in the morning and I'm dying. Who knows? But that's not the point of the video. The point of the video is to say, hey, Dark Souls has had something with Smash before, even if it was just a theory that uh, obviously was proven wrong, as our first fighter pass consisted of 
Hero, Banjo, Terry, and Byleth, though it did get Banjo right, so I guess it wasn't a total loss, but when you consider that it was a, you know, one out of four, well, I mean, I guess it was just something that people wanted to cling on to, because, well, because as with anything Smash speculation, we're only going to be talking about the five characters, same, the same characters over and over again, and this is why this series was made, you know, because I... I hate Smash speculation, but, 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 but that's not the point. The point is that, hey, I think it'd be cool to have some Dark Souls in Smash. Do I think it deserves a fighter? Well, as I've said before, and I will keep saying over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, every character, no matter who they are, has just as much of a chance to make it to Smash as any other. It's just about who you believe is more likely. And to me, well, I think it's definitely possible for us to get Dark Souls rub. I know people will be like, Well, Sam, we've just got Kazuya. And, well, that's our Bandai Namco rep. So we couldn't possibly get another. But to me, I disagree with that sentiment. Because, in my personal opinion, when you say something like that, you're only valuing a company and not a franchise. And I think it's important to value franchises over companies. Because, I mean... If we're valuing companies over franchises, then Crash should not be in Smash based on Activision's entire history. I mean, hey, I'm just being honest. You know, you can't tell me, you can't tell me a character can't be in Smash because they're owned by a certain company, but then turn your back on, you know, other characters an example, or if it goes for your character, then hey, it works for my character, but it doesn't go for the other, you know, it's it's kind of hypocritical in that sense. I mean, you know, may, maybe I'm the crazy one. I'm not, but what if I was? So, yeah, generally, my personal opinion, I think Dark Souls would be cool. It kind of sucks that I didn't even get like a me costume if that was like the least I was getting. And it's also just confusing that there aren't that many franchises that are owned by Bandai Namco that are represented in Smash. It's really weird, but like I said, we'll be going over said franchise. And the next one I'll be covering is about a Sonic looking guy. Yeah. Well, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Subscribe! <laughs> you know, I was gonna show a thousand subs for the end of the year because that's just what I'm about. Oh, and lastly, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Take care. Peace.